We are on day two of my extended fast. I believe I'm about 37 hours into my fast. I don't know how long it's going, but it looks like it's gonna be a long fast because my blood sugar levels keep rising and rising and rising. I wonder if it's because I've been putting on a lot of muscle lately. Um, it's interesting because I, when I first used my continuous glucose monitor, I was coming off of doing OMAD. And now that I'm doing my, or using my continuous glucose monitor, I am coming off of eating a bodybuilding diet and I'm noticing my blood sugar level, like my, my fasted state is higher. So it's staying in the fives. It will not dip into the threes like it did when I was OMAD fasting. So I think it's going to be very important for me to go into ketosis. And I talked to Marcella about this and I think she might be on board. Go into the ketosis for two to three weeks, probably three weeks, and then that week before my period, I'm gonna eat carbs. I'm just gonna follow Dr. Mindy Pels's protocol for women who are still cycling. So yeah, I'm right now walking bow. I have tons of energy, which is weird. I think it's coming from my muscles because when you build muscle, you actually um, open up, up more glucose receptors um, or glu yeah, glucose receptor sites or insulin, sorry, insulin receptor sites. And then muscles hold on to a lot of stuff too. So it is what it is, but yeah, we'll touch base. I have not checked my ketone levels yet. So after I'm done this walk with Bo, I am gonna check my ketone levels and we're gonna do a blood glucose check. So we are 37 hours into my extended fast and I've got girlfriend here. Hi girlfriend. And I'm just kind of opening up Dr. Mindy Pels as fast like a girl. And she just talks about the benefits of the 36 hour plus fast, releases stored sugar, reduces cholesterol, minimizes weight loss resistance. Um, I don't want to show too much because this is like her book. Um, but yeah, that is the benefit of that. And then she goes into like the other class. So I ended up getting some elements. This is the element you guys want. Someone did comment and they told me, hey, element does have stevia in it. The other flavors have stevia. This is the element you want. I now have an Amazon store, so it will be linked in my description below. But you want the raw unflavored. This is the element pack you want if you want to do a clean old man fast or if you want to fast. Right, Bo? Yes, I got to take her out for a walk. But this is the one you want. There's nothing in it. You read the ingredients and it is literally just sodium chloride. It's in French. Can we have English, please? I'm going to have to read it in French. Uh, sodium de chloride de sodium. <laughs> um, citric acid, I think, magnesium, and potassium chloride. I read them in English. I don't know why this is in French. Um, I guess the Canadian law thing. But if I pull out one of these suckers, you'll see. But this is the element one you want. It's the one that's in this beautiful kind of like aqua green color. What a beautiful color. I like that color. My favorite color is green. And this is kind of like a, like a green, green. It's a green, but it's a cool green. It's like a chill green. Also, I took berberine. So berberine is something that helps with dropping your blood glucose levels. Dr. Mindy Pels mentioned it in the book. Um, can I, thanks, Bo, in the book? Yes. I forgot what she called berberine. I'm trying to find it in the book where she mentioned what berberine was. Hmm. But based off of this Google article here, berberine is a compound that is naturally found in plants and it has many benefits that help promote weight loss, enhance blood sugar regulation, and protect against several chronic conditions. It also helps with heart health too. Um, as it says here, berberine has been shown to lower blood sugar levels, duh, which is why I want to take it, increase weight loss, and improve heart health. And berberine, I learned about it from Andrew Huberman, and it is as good as metformin in helping reduce blood sugar levels. Now, metformin is a drug that um, people with diabetes take, and berberine is a natural substance that does just as well as metformin. And again, it can help with, oh, wow, it also helps with depression, 
non-alcoholic fatty liver, which I still had. I last checked it when I was like 200 and like 15 pounds. I got to check it again. I should have checked it like before, but it's okay. Um, I had so many things going on with my health. But berberine is such a, a good thing. Well, I took it about half an hour ago and I want to see if it's helping. Well, almost half an hour ago. It's like 11.23. I took it like at 11 and I want to see if it's helping reduce my blood sugar levels. I want my blood sugar levels at in the four range. Yeah, it lowers blood sugar levels, decreases insulin resistance. Such a good little thing. I got this off of Amazon. I'll put this in my Amazon store too. I got a big bottle. Um, yeah, these two will be linked in my Amazon store. Um, slow breakdown of carbohydrates in your gut, which is key because when you break down carbohydrates slowly, you don't like have a flood of glucose running into your bloodstream. And it's those spikes that I was saying that causes like the hunger pains or like not the hunger pains, but the increased appetite and all sorts of sorts of metabolic mayhem. Oh, crap. Berberine's like a super thing. Okay, everyone needs to take it. It even increases the number of beneficial gut bacteria. What is this thing? My God. A study in 2008 said um, 116 people with diabetes BDs, taking one gram of berberine per day lowered their blood fasting sugar by 20%. Like, this is insane. I'm going to have to do a, yeah, berberine helps you lose weight. A whole video on berberine because this is a sub supplement that everyone needs who wants to make that metabolic switch. Like, it literally talks about everything. Everything I've been harping about on my channel lately, like gut, gut health, lowering blood sugar levels, mental health, like crazy, crazy. It's amazing what you can learn from YouTube. It's like YouTube University. Just be careful who you learn from. You got to do your due diligence. Even with me, guys, do your due diligence. You know, learn, take what you learn from me, but also fact check me, verify me and everything. But I try to be as accurate as I can with what I'm doing. Wow, it lowers triglyceride levels, cholesterol. This this thing is a super, super thing. <laughs> All right, let's test my blood sugar. So I am 39 hours into my fast, if you can see there. There we go. And I'm going to test my blood sugar, which is easy because I've got my CGM on right there. So, um... I'm waiting for my period to start. Yeah, I broke the golden rule and I started a fast literally like two days before my period. And now it's not here. I sometimes you just got to do what you need to do. I was getting out of control. So I just needed to jump myself into a fast. It was very important to do so. Um, fasting and OMAD, like when you are do OMAD and you get your result, you're going to have to do mini checks. So mini checks means like some prolonged fasts here and there, OMAD here and there, because again, our food is still toxic. So what I'm noticing is that I'm going to probably have to do some OMAD days just to help me keep things at bay. You know, it's just, and I'm not, I have no problem with it. Plus the benefits of all of that as well. So, um, let's see what my blood sugar is at. <laughs> of course it's at 6.1. However, my curve has been pretty, I would say this is pretty, pretty flat. No significant spikes. I'm just going to take a screenshot of it right now so you guys can see it. Um, so not too bad. I'm just going to add a note. This is 39 hours into my fast. Into my fast. And the fact that my blood sugar is at 6.1 shows that got a lot going on because I'm not really hungry. So clearly my body's doing its thing. <laughs> Blood sugars keep going up and you're fasting, keep fasting. Like that's the rule. Now I want to check my ketones because the purpose of this fast is to throw me into ketosis. For me, ketosis is having a blood ketone reading of something. <laughs> I've never gone, I've never had high ketone readings. I don't know why. Um, I did once and the machine yelled at me. Um, but anyway, hopefully, I think this machine's charged. So this is disposable. You only buy this once. It costs a hundred bucks Canadian. This I bought like years ago. This I can keep using and I can test blood glucose with these, but the strips for blood glucose is so expensive, expensive. The keto strips that I have here, I have the, I have the Freestyle Libre. They're $25 for about 10, whereas the glucose strips are like, 
they're literally like the cost of this. So I might as well just get this and it's less pain instead of poking my finger every two seconds. So I'm gonna do that right now. Hopefully this is on. I hate poking my finger. I can't believe I used to do both. Now I just have to do ketones this way. I wish there was like a continuous blood ketone monitor. Do those exist? If they do, let me know because I think I need one because I want to know if I'm actually ever getting into ketosis because every time I take a snapshot of things, I'm never in ketosis. So like, what? These are not ketone ones. And these expire too. This expires at the end of the year. These are already expired. These are the glucose ones. Anyway, ketone ones. So I just want to see where my ketones are at. If I'm producing some sort of ketones, then I know that I'm going into ketosis, but I should be in ketosis considering. But ketosis is, um, yeah, you, in order to be in ketosis, your blood sugar needs to be low. <laughs> and right now for me, it's high for me. Like Dr. Mindy Pell says fasting blood sugar should be less than five, and I agree. Um, the medical people say less than eight for diabetes. Um, I will convert the grams per deciliters down below. I hate doing this, but... Wait, did I even, okay. Okay, we got it. That wasn't too painful. Hopefully the machine reads this, because if I lose this, I lose a strip, and we don't want that to happen. So let's get this going. Please be ketones in my blood. If there's no ketones in my blood, I'm gonna have to keep fasting. Ugh, there's 0.1, so there we go, 0.1. 0.1 millimoles per liter. I'm gonna link that up with this. Um, I can add my ketone result. Add notes, um, long acting insulin ketone reading at 0.1 millimoles per liter. I can actually link these up in the app, but it didn't work for some reason. Like this should be able to link up to the app on this, but it's not, I want it to but maybe I'll figure that out. So yeah, that's where I'm at. About 40 hours into my fast, my blood glucose levels oh, it went, down, it went down to 5.9. <laughs> 5.9 millimoles per liter. So let me find the info on what Dr. Mindy Pels has in terms of blood glucose levels. So I am gonna just update you on the entire blood glucose reading that I was talking about with Dr. Mindy Pels. I'm trying to get the lighting right here, I'm trying to get the angles right here. Let's get this off my neck. It's not even hot anymore. Yeah, all of my injuries right now are flaring up. <laughs> not really flaring up, but I'm getting pain, but it means it's healing. I know after this fast, I'll be good. But, um, so yeah, so basically, Dr. Mindy Powell says a good sign of metabolic health is when your fasting blood glucose level is at 70 milligrams per deciliter. That is 5.0 millimoles per liter or less, so 70 or less. That's a good sign. This morning when I first woke up, I believe it was at 4.9. I'm just freaking out because when I was doing my fast earlier on in the year, I remember it being in the threes. So basically they said um, people who do not have diabetes, so type one or type two, and if they have a normal blood glucose level of 2.8 to 3.9 mill millimoles per liter, which translates to 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter, um, that's also normal, even though it's quote unquote low. Cause um, when I would get into the threes, my CGM would freak out and be like, oh, warning, blood sugar too low, but it's normal. And I know for me, based on my experience, when my blood sugar is in, I've never seen it go below three. I think it may have gone to 2.9 once, but when it's in the threes, like 3.0, 3.4, Five, even 3.8 I lose a ton of weight so that's why I'm kind of like why is it not in the threes yet because <laughs> I like that first fast I did I lost so much weight so that's good to know that's why it's useful having the CGM and um I believe the standard for a normal uh glucose level for those who are you know quote-unquote not diabetic by the standard when I say standard I mean what doctors go by which whatever because what doctors have been telling us is the standard has been making people sick so um 
they say normal blood glucose levels between um, 70 to 99 milligrams per deciliter. So that is 3.9 to 5.5 millimoles per liter. But Dr. Mindy Pell says real metabolic health is at 70 or less. So I agree. And that's 5.0 per liter. Uh, millimoles per liter. And I agree. So you want to look for that. So if you're testing your blood sugar levels and you wake up in the morning and if you have a reading below 70 milligrams per deciliter, it means you are in good metabolic health. Um, so i rather go by Dr. Mindy Pelz's numbers because she's worked with thousands, maybe even, I don't know, a lot of clients over the years helping them heal. And another thing about the ketone levels. Um, so I watched another video by Thomas DeLauer, just because your ketone levels don't go up, it doesn't mean you're not in ketosis. I always, I can never get past like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And Thomas DeLauer has the same problem. And he was saying his wife can get to one and she's in optimal ketosis. Um, that's not always true for everybody because some people just, the ketones don't just stay in their body. Ketones are maybe going to different parts of their body to heal. Like for me, I have tons of injuries, but I obviously know I am in ketosis because I felt like I was in ketosis. I clearly lost weight because I was in ketosis. I did keto OMAD. I was never hungry. So, and I was eating a normal looking diet. So don't get hung on, hung up too much on the keto numbers. And did I mention the first thing in the morning thing? I don't know if I did, but first thing in the morning, after you wake up and start moving and your blood sugar rises, that is not a bad thing. That is a good thing. That's normal. It's actually called the Dawn effect where your body dumps a bunch of glucose into the bloodstream when you wake up in the morning from the food from last night. Or if you're just fasting, it does that because when you're fasting at night, your your body's going into those deep sugar stores. So Dr. Mindy Powell says not to worry about your blood glucose levels going up when you're fasting. So blood sugar is stored in a hierarchy. And just let me quickly explain it to you. When your body gets glucose, it starts to store it in your blood. Then when it's not in your blood, it goes to the liver, hence why uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is what I had. I had it at like 200 and something pounds, but um, I'm going to retest it again in the future. But that makes sense because non-alcoholic fatty liver disease should be seen as a sign of diabetes, I think. It should be. It should not just be the blood glucose levels. And then in the muscles, then fat, then brain, then eyes, which makes sense where I talked about that woman that my mom knew who unfortunately went blind because her diabetes went out of control and she's only in her 40s and now she has to live in an assisted living home, which is so heartbreaking. So that's like the level of how our body stores blood glucose into our bodies. And the brain, they say Alzheimer's is type three diabetes, which makes sense. It totally makes sense. So if your body's starting to store, you know, in the brain and the eyes, your blood glucose levels are high. So yeah, blood sugar going up in a fasted state is a good thing as your body is going after stored blood sugar. So my body's doing what exactly what my, I want my body to do. So I'm pretty proud of it. But we're going to keep fasting. And this is probably like the easiest, easiest extended fast ever because I just have a lot. I think it's going in the muscles right now. I think I have tons stored in the muscles. Muscles is after the liver. Yeah, blood, liver, muscle, then fat. And yeah. Well, we want to go to the fat, but anyway, I'm excited to go back on ketosis because this is what my body needs. <laughs> so today I had a lot of energy. I walked the dog. I'm charging my phone, so I don't know what my glucose number is. But I remember during the live stream, it was 5.6. I did a live stream, so I'm going to grab a clip from the live stream and show you guys me testing my blood glucose levels. Oh, wow, I'm at 0.3. <laughs> I'm laughing because I never get ketone levels. Oh, there we go. I'm at 0.3 millimoles per liter. <laughs> For me, that's a lot, okay? Some people can get like one. For me, that's a lot. So I'm in ketosis. So I remember Dr. Mindy Pell's talk. For me, that's ketosis. Because for some people, it just doesn't show up in their blood as much. For me, my ketones, you know where they're going? They're running to all my injuries and healing them. That's where they're going. They're not in the blood. They're being used. They're being utilized by my brain. Because when you are fasting, you're, you're helping to heal multiple things. You are putting yourself in a state of autophagy. So you're going to heal the neurons in your brain. So that's going to help with mental health. Um, and obviously prevent neurodegenerative diseases that we're seeing 
all the like lately, like Alzheimer's and whatnot. Um, fasting is going to help the liver. The liver is like the number one place where our body stores excess glucose. So our liver adores fasting. So when we are in a state of fasting, our liver gets to, you know, get rid of that stored sugar. And in, in the process, it's healing itself. Or not my blood glucose levels, my ketone levels. So my ketone level went up from 0.1 to 0.3. So yay, I'm going into ketosis. The point of this fast is to put my ass in ketosis because I'm too inflamed. And I do well in ketosis. I'm just happy bird in ketosis. A bird, that's what the British people say for girls. Your bird, go get your bird. Um, I'm just a happy bird in ketosis. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm in a good state. I've only had one of these electrolyte packs, only one. I don't even need any more. Um, day two is much easier. Honestly, the first day of an extended fast is always the hardest. But once you go to bed and you wake up the next morning, you will feel like you are on top of the world. So yeah, I'm getting lots of healing going on, like my whole rib system. Because um, the car accident did something to me. My whole ribs are off, but I'm feeling like all of this, just pain being healed. I'm getting max autophagy. You know, I don't have chronic fatigue anymore, so that's a win. Um, I didn't have, I got rid of that months ago, but this is day two of my fast. I am currently, I should go get my phone. <laughs> I was like, my blood glucose level went up. Yeah, that's because I'm walking. It's at 5.7 now, but I am currently, I believe, 45 hours into my fast. Oh, oh I'm 46 hours into my fast, and I feel like I can fast forever. Because this is like the easiest fast on earth. I was saying on the live stream, I think it's my muscles because I was taking creatine. So what creatine does, it shoves water into your muscles, kind of like that. It gives your muscles energy. So I'm wondering if it's also shoved in a bunch of sugar and electrolytes. Plus, I've been building muscle. So when you're building muscle, what's going to happen with the carbs that you're eating? That carbs is going to turn into sugar. And like I said earlier, your body stores um, glucose. Blood goes to the blood first, then it goes to the liver, then it goes to the muscles, then it goes to the fat cells, then it goes to the brain, then it goes to the eyeball. Um, but um, I think a lot of it is in my muscle right now. So we'll see what's happening. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm loving the second day of my fast. I will touch base with you guys in the next video. So thank you for being here. If you made it this far into the video, just drop in the word or the number 46 because I'm 46 hours into my fast. And I'm so excited to do a keto OMAD vlog for you guys. So there will be day one of this vlog, day two, which is today, there will be a day three. And then when I eat my meal, that will be my keto OMAD. <laughs> and then I'm sending you guys my vlog. Take care. Bye.